All right, welcome to the 401 work together. Um, first thing let's do is we'll look at our instructions. Um, our instructions have given us the following information um, for our adjustments. Um, the partially completed adjusted trial balance and general journal and, and those things are not given to us in our working pages. What we're gonna have to do um, is use our uh, ledger that's given to us and I'll show you where that is. But our first step here is to record the adjusting entries on page 20 of our general journal. So that's where we're going to start. Um, so our first adjustment information tells us that the estimate of uncollectible accounts says that it should be $2,101.23. So that is what the ending balance is as of December 31st. So if we go back to our general ledger and we go to our allowance for uncollectible accounts. Um, without the adjustment, it says it's at $77.38. And it should be, as I said, at here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our $2,101.23 and we're going to subtract out um, the $77.38. And what we end up with is $2,023.85. That is our adjustment amount. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to put that in so we don't forget it. Okay. Um, this, of course, again is on December 31. Um, remember for this one, our adjusting, our adjustment information is our credit goes to uncollectible accounts expense. Um, there is no document number. Our adjusting entries title here serves as that. And then our credit goes to our allowance for uncollectible accounts. So again, just as a reminder, the way that I found that, it says that our ending balance should be this, the 2,101.23. And when I go to our ledger, it says that right now the balance sits at 77.38. So the difference between those two is the amount that will be adjusted and we'll post that eventually here but not at this exact moment okay our next adjusting entry um, is going to be for our departmental data for merchandise inventory for a kitchen and our ending merchandise inventory for a bath so as of december 31st it says our ending merchandise inventory should be one thousand forty seven dollars or $147,084.62. When we go back over here and look at what it says in our uh, merchandise inventory for our kitchen, it says that we actually had um, 140. So what's happening is ending inventory is greater than beginning. So we take the difference between those two and we end up with $6,194.62. Now, because ending inventory is greater than the beginning, what we need to do is we need to debit our merchandise inventory account. So I'm going to come up here, we're going to put the 31st in, and we're going to debit merchandise inventory for the kitchen for the $6,194.62. What gets credited, remember, is income summary for the kitchen. 6,194.62. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is when we look at our next one, it says our ending inventory for the bath was $97,671.31. If we go and look at what our general ledger says, oops, it's $98,000. $620. So what's happening here is ending inventory is, or beginning inventory is greater than our ending inventory. So we're still going to take the difference between those, and that's $948.69. The difference is, is that we need to credit our merchandise inventory account because our ending inventory was less than our beginning. Since it's less, that means that we have to credit it since merchandise inventory is an asset. So what we do is we come up here and we put the 31st and what gets debited then is our income summary for the bath for that $948.69. The credit goes to merchandise inventory because that needs to be reduced and it's as simple as that. 
So the biggest thing you have to recognize is which one is greater. Is ending inventory greater than beginning or is beginning greater than ending? And that will determine what happens here with merchandise inventory and income summary. Remember that merchandise inventory is an asset. That's the easiest thing I can remind you of. If it's greater at the end, that means you have to debit it because it goes up. If ending inventory is less, that means that you have to credit it because the asset went down. That's the easiest way that I can remember um, it, so I, hopefully it works for you too. Okay, our next adjusting entry is for supplies. It says our supplies on hand at the end of the month was 1950. Let's go see what it says in our general ledger. It says $6,097.89. So the difference between those two is 4,000, oops, I think I punched something in wrong. 6,097.89 minus 19.50. There we go, $4,147.89. So you just take the difference between those because what we have here, remember, is what the actual adjustment uh, um, information is. Um, the stuff that we have down here in our ledger is before we've posted our adjusting entries. So remember that what gets the debit is supplies expense. For $4,147.89, and then supplies gets the credit since we ended up using up those supplies. Okay. Um, our next one is uh, going to be insurance, I believe. So the value of prepaid insurance at the end of the year was $2,500. If we look at what we started with in prepaid insurance, it was 18,000. So we take 18,000 minus 2,500 and we get 15,500. So we go right on up here. Same thing again. Um, uh, sorry, insurance expense will be our debit for 15,500. And prepaid insurance will get our credit of 15,500. Um, next up is going to be our two depreciation expenses. The nice thing about depreciation expense is that what's listed here um, are the adjustment information. So that's a little different. We don't have to do any math with these two. What's listed is just the amount that gets put in there. So um, for our first one, we have uh, depreciation expense for office equipment. And again, that number was 7250 And our credit goes to accumulated depreciation expense, or excuse me, accumulated depreciation for office, 7250 And then our last one is for the store equipment. That's $8,490. So we plug that in here. Depreciation for store, 8490 and accumulated depreciation store 8490 so let's go back and check our instructions because i think what they're going to have us do um yes so we're going to post these um and enter those adjusted account balances in our account uh, adjusted child balance and then afterwards we're going to do our last one which is to calculate our federal income tax expense so um, let's post these um, first off. So our first one we're going to start with um, is our uncollectible accounts expense. So we come, oops, I don't need to do that. Uncollectible accounts expense. Let me put the 31st. It's G20, I believe. I better check that real quick. Yes. And 2023.85. Oops, forgot to put my 2023.85. Yes. Okay. 
There we go. And then we just take our 7,155 uh, and come up here and put our post reference in. And then we go on to our allowance for uncollectible accounts. First, G20, this is a credit of 2023.85. And then remember, what should happen here um, is it should give us the um, adjustment information that we were given. So um, if you look here, if you add these two together, it gives us $2,101.23, which, if you remember, is what they said our balance was as of December 31st. So that's a quick way to check to see if we did everything correctly. Um, so 1210 is our number. We come right back up here and plug that in there. I just wanna check my time here real quick. We'll do a few more. Okay, so our merchandise inventory in the kitchen. Come down here. This thing is really touchy. So we put the 31st G20. This is a debit of $6,194.62. And when you do that, again, you should end up with a balance here of $147,084.62. Uh, and $1,305 goes right up here. Um, income summary for our kitchen is next. That gets a credit of the $6,194.62. So that's an easy one to plug in. No extra math there. 3210. Um, this one remembers the one where merchandise inventory at the end was um, greater than in the beginning, or excuse me, less than in the beginning. So we're actually starting with our income summary in the back. So G20, this one gets a debit of $948.69. So just make sure you get it in the right column. This one again is the uh, debit for income summary. And then merchandise inventory for the bath. And then this gets the credit of 948.61 or 69, excuse me. And again, that should give us an updated balance of the 97,671.31. So that's a nice, easy way to check to see if you're doing that correctly. So 1310. Okay. I think I'm going to pause here because actually we can do a couple more, maybe one more. Um, let's do the supplies expense one. That's an easy one to do. Supplies expense. $4,147.89. And seventy one fifty, and then supplies. Oops, so touchy. And that gets the credit of that same four thousand one hundred forty seven dollars and eighty nine cents. And again, when you subtract those two, you should end up with the balance and supplies of nineteen fifty which is the correct answer. So we go back and put 1405 right up there. Okay, for real, I'm going to stop now and I'll meet you over in part two and we'll keep posting and do our federal income tax adjustment after that.